Welcome to the Lean Blog Podcast. Visit our website at www.leanblog.org. Now, here's your host, Mark Graben. Hi, you're listening to episode number 36 of the Lean Blog Podcast. It's February 8th, 2008, and this is Mark Graben. Uh, our guest today is Norman Bodek. He's going to be talking about uh, the new book he brought to the lean world from Shigeo Shingo called Kaizen and the Art of Creative Thinking. Uh, I do apologize for the delay in getting this podcast out. We actually spoke about the book back in uh, September of last year. So when you hear us talking about how the book will be coming out, um, the book uh, has already been out on the market. And if you'd like to buy it, um, there's a link uh, to do so on uh, leanpodcast.org if you look for uh, the link to episode 36. Um, so I hope you enjoy the podcast, uh, belated as it may be. I hope you'll also come back for future episodes, including one in about a week uh, with Jeffrey Liker, when we'll be talking about uh, his new book, Toyota Culture. So as always, thanks for listening. Well, it's my pleasure to welcome a, a frequent guest here on the Lean Blog podcast back uh, again today, Norman Bodek. Thanks for being here. Hi, thank you, Mark. Uh, today we're going to talk about a new book from Shigeo Shingo that you are going to help um, introduce us to. Can you tell us kind of the background and, and what that book's going to be about? Yeah, I go to Japan at, probably twice a year over the last 30 years. Been there 67 times. And lately, um, I go to visit Mrs. Shingo, Dr. Shingo's wife. I see her at least once a year or once every other year. And a couple of years ago, I visited her house, and she showed me a number of Shingo's old books that I did not translate. I've mm -hmm. translated and published maybe five or six of Dr. Shingo's books, and there's a lot of old ones. And I went and selected three of them specifically. And I took the first one. Uh, Dr. Shingo called it the Scientific Thinking Mechanism, and I went to the publisher and negotiated the rights to reprint it in English. And then with a company called ENA, E-N-N-A, in the mm -hmm. state of Washington, uh, we agreed to become partners on producing this book of Shingo's in English. I had no idea what was in it because I don't read Japanese, so it's always a big gamble for me <laughs> when I do this. When I own productivity, I would translate maybe five books, and I was very lucky because four of them were good, very good, and one of them I couldn't use. But this one turned out to be an incredible jewel. I teach quick and easy Kaizen. Right. And um, this is a very simple process to get all workers involved in creative improvement activities. It's really the Japanese suggestion system. And when you really challenge people to identify problems and solve them, it's amazing what they'll do. I mean, in America... The average worker comes up with one suggestion every seven years. Yeah. <laughs> in Japan, it's 24 in writing. At Toyota, at one time, it was 70 ideas. Now, I teach people this system, and it works. It's miraculously miraculous how my clients are able to go from hardly any to, like, Gulfstream. They got 16 ideas from a 1,000 workers in February 2005, and now they're up to 27,000. Yeah, it's not a problem that people can't come up with the ideas, but they're not being asked or there, there aren't mechanisms for them to communicate those ideas, right? Absolutely right, Mark. Yeah, but we don't have the mechanism. We don't ask them. We don't go out and say to the worker and challenge them. You, you got problems. Look, people are solving problems. Of course they are. But we don't have, most companies don't have the system to draw this out. So instead of just getting a handful here we're getting thousands of them. And we're looking for very small ideas because we want people to be excited at work. Well, so I teach people to the system, but I don't teach them how to identify, or I haven't ta taught them how to identify and solve them. And Shingo's come up with this marvelous book, just marvelous, filled with beautiful charts and graphs and wonderful stories because Dr. Shingo was a great storyteller. Yeah. And this is a really a step-by-step -step process of how you can identify problems and solve them. And I'm so proud of it. I mean, I'm so lucky in my life. I, I, it's, 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 my life is always filled with miracles. 
and this is such a beautiful book. Um, and even Jeffrey Leiker wrote the foe to it, which is very exciting for me. Shingo taught in the book, I'm just looking at the table of contents, and the first part is on the principles of analytical thinking. And the second chapter is capturing problems. How do you find problems? Never accept the status quo. Mm -hmm. How do you clarify problems? What's the five elements of problems? Uh, he talks about Gilbraith's uh, work, his 18 third legs, yep. thinking analytically for purposes of improvement. Then the third chapter is idea generation for improvement. Mm -hmm. um, many paths to a single summit. Mental activities for improvement. And what he calls his scientific thinking mechanism, which is brilliant. This is a flow chart and this is a process of how you get people to think scientifically about solving problems. Right, right. And he gives us 12 steps. 12 steps. Eliminate um, looking at opposing viewpoints, etc. Next chapter is the evolution of improvement. And he gives us a little bit of a history and brings us up to automation. And then the, the fifth chapter is from ideas to reality. Overcoming mental obstacles, separating idea generation from judgment, an engineer's instinct versus a manager's instinct, and what's the ten objections? He calls these the ten objections. Yeah. Um, objection based on exceptions, nitpicking objection, unit manipulation of objection, chicken or egg objection, tadpole <laughs> objection, cross-eyed objection. These are just beautiful. And the last chapter is promoting improvement ideas within the organization, developing what he calls a nine-point policy, the true value of improvement. And the last one he talks about looking in the mirror. It sounds, it sounds like some very practical uh, material for, for how do you drive Kaizen. And... Oh, yeah. I mean, first of all, when you read this, you recognize, you know, that the only way to achieve this, this comes from people. So mm -hmm. I got to develop people. I got to work with people. <laughs> right. And if we do, they'll go out and solve these problems. Look, what we're looking for is not complicated. We want to improve productivity and we want zero defects. Right. And so then and this book is going to be available somewhat soon, right? Yeah, it's published um, by November 1st. It'll be available. And we did something new this time that I've done in the last recent years. It's going to be in hardcover. Okay. Uh -huh. So th this will be available um, through PCSpress.com and I assume the major online booksellers. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, they can get the book from me at PCS Press or they can get it from Anna, E-N-N-A. -N -N I'm sure they'll love it. Yeah. Uh, what's the title again? And it's called Kaizen and the Art of Creative Thinking. Okay. Now, um, those of you that are familiar with my past books of Shingo, I want to tell you about one book, which was the Smed book, you know, the white book. Yeah. Single Minute Exchange. I, when I found it, then I published it, and I had the audacity to sell it for $60. <laughs> Call it the audacity. It was a lot of money, but the book cost a fortune. Um, first of all, I didn't know what I was doing back then in publishing a book. I had to pay for the translation twice because the first translation was so bad. It was a real struggle to produce it. Yeah. But we sold over 100,000 copies of it and wow. it revolutionized manufacturing. I mean, when you think of the many companies in America, a changeover is not a problem anymore by following Dr. Shingo's advice. Yeah. And now Shingo's addressed this other area of creative thinking. I, it's the heart of what he taught thousands of Toyota managers. Yeah. Have gone through this. And I hope that there will be people smart enough out there that will look at this book and develop their own training courses to teach what's in here to the workers. Right. Right. Cause you, you hear, I see a lot of questions or, you know, people asking online, uh, about how to get training and, and the Toyota problem solving methodology. Cause you hear so much about how that's really the, the, the key 
to what the, the management system and the Toyota way um, is about. So I mean, it seems like there's a real, you know, kind of pressing need or there's a, a, a hunger out there for learning about that. Yeah, you brought up something I think is very interesting um, in the whole learning process. One, is you, one, of course, you should go to school. Everybody should go to school for life. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, this thing about I graduated college or high school and, and learning is over has to stop. And so we have to go to school. The best school, of course, is the school of life. The best school should be at each company. Each company should have their own university. And who should be the teachers? The teachers should be the workers. There are companies in America that are outstanding. I, one company where like 75% of the people in the plant were teachers. Somebody who had a really great skill would teach that skill to the other workers in the plant. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is the kind of book that I think the same thing should happen, is companies should take it and read it in study groups, right? Then as they read it together in study groups, then they challenge people to use the material there, go out on the factory floor and do it. Yeah. So you have that book coming out. Um, You you had mentioned when when we talked previously that you have some other books that you're working on as well. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, I'll tell you. I have quite a number that I find. I found, especially on this trip, I found quite a number of new books I'm going to be attempting to do as quickly as I can. Um, But these two other Shingo books that I'm going to be publishing, one is almost completely translated. And um, this is, this is probably the most difficult project I've ever had in my life. First of all, it's brilliant. It's Shingo talking about the fundamentals of plant improvement. Mm -hmm. And he's meticulous in his description and his precision in the way he did it. But it's very difficult. And to what extent will American managers, American engineers, American workers be willing to study this? Yeah. It's like going to college. It really is. It's going to colleges. Here here I have a machine that's not op- operating as efficiently as can as it can. What can I do to make it operate more efficiently? You have to really study very hard in order to do this. Well, that's the way this book is. And I can't envision somebody just picking up the book and reading it from beginning to end. I've been reading it, and it's very, very hard for me. Yeah. And I've done all these hundreds of books. Is it just a pretty intense process or if this is very intense but it's worth the effort if we can get people to do the effort together and so i think what i'm going to ask is people like you mark and a lot of the people that i know a lot of the professors that i know i'm going to ask them to take a few pages of the book and to tell us their understanding of it Mm -hmm. what it means to them and to also come up with questions that we could have at the end of every chapter. Oh, okay. Yeah, then the book could be used uh, at a university, and the book could be used within a company where people can read the chapter, read Shingo's brilliance, but also listen to some other expert and their feeling about the work, and then asking each other the questions and challenging each other, are we doing it this way? I mean, really, have we addressed the issue of transportation within a plant properly? As an example, transportation is a waste. How do we eliminate that waste? I mean, you go to many plants and you see people happy with their forklifts running (laughs) all over the place, you know, delivering. Or they've added conveyor belts. Or they've added conveyor belt, right. And, you know, they're, they're happy with the transportation, but transportation is a waste and it should be eliminated. Yeah. And how do you, well, Toyota just did something interesting I've noticed in my last two visits. One in Georgetown last year and this visit recently, uh, in Japan this September, which is 2007, is they're now using a kidding system. Yeah. I saw the kidding system at Canon about 15 years ago, but not at Toyota. Well, and they're doing this down in San Antonio. It's been in the news as well. Yes, and this system really eliminates a tremendous amount of waste. Um, reduces inventory to a minimum because 
the kit is filled with the parts, with all of the medium-sized, smaller parts, and it goes with the car. And so the worker picks out of the box, out of the kit for the box, the container, the parts that they need for this specific car because every car is different. Right, right. Right, so what I saw at Prius on my visit in September is that as soon as we walk into the plant, we can see the inventory area, and the worker is filling a container. And the way they do it is there's the container is um, they're in sort of like a a rectangle. The worker's in the middle, and all around the sides are the parts yeah. to be picked. And a light goes off. And the worker runs over to that area where the light is, a green light, and then pulls out the part that he needs. And I think a red light goes on to show that he did pull it out. Because we want to make sure that he did pull it out. Uh, and, and not that he just went to the light and took it and then clicked the trigger, but he doesn't have the part in his hand. Right. That's Shingo's pokey okay system. And then it goes into the into the container, and then the container goes and follows that specific car along the line. So the only parts that are there are the parts that that car needs. Right. And you don't have the 20, 30, or 50 items uh, cluttering up the whole factory floor. So, so that was put into effect, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, as uh, the result of a you know, particular problem. And by going through a problem-solving process like Shingo... Uh, wrote about, they decided that kidding was a good solution for that, I bet, right? Yeah, because it eliminates it eliminates inventory. And it only puts into the box exactly what belongs to that car. Previously, the worker would select from the parts behind them what they would put in. Right. And they could make a mistake. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's a lot of... Um, you, know, you, you don't have if, uh, as much floor space with line side inventory... Um, I've, I've got to tell you a story because it's, it's right along the line of this topic. Um, you're talking about, you know, thought process and problem solving as opposed to just copying what other companies have done. Uh, I, I was at a, a series of meetings a couple weeks back. I, I blogged about this briefly and I'm not going to mention who the company is, but it's uh, a, a company that, uh, you know, pretty big major company. Uh, they are going through a kick now where they're trying to you know, try to copy the Toyota production system and, and they're going to do lean. And you know, they've always used kidding in their assembly because there's a high variety, a lot of the um, factories you had mentioned. And they were getting away from the kidding and doing, you know, Kanban and line side inventory. Um, you know, at least the way they described it was, well, that's how Toyota does it and we're going to be like Toyota now. And then later in that same set of meetings, we had a guy from uh, uh, Oregon at the the Toyota – um, truck customization and assembly facility there. And he was telling a very similar story about how Toyota decided, at least you know, at their plant and other plants, that they are going um, away from line side storage to kidding because of all of these benefits. And I saw the guy from this other company was just scribbling furiously, and I felt bad for him that you know they, they were doing this inspired by what they thought Toyota w- was doing. Um, you know, rather than, you know, rather than using a, a problem solving process, like I'm sure the Shingo book describes where I think, well, gosh, if, you know, they, they really need to you know, figure out for themselves what makes sense rather than just copying somebody. Of course. Of course. That's a great key. I mean, you do want to study the best, but you have to know why they're doing it. Yeah. And then you have to see that it applies for you, that you're doing the best. So Toyota is a great system that works for building automobiles. And I'm sure it can work for many things, but you have to adapt what you need, you know, for your for your environment. Um, kidding was good because it helps the precision that we have the right parts for each car, and we're eliminating so much of the transportation that ran on in a factory. Yeah. You don't see in the Toyota plant all of these forklifts going back and forth. You do see some... But even less, you do see robotics. You know, you see the unmanned vehicles. But you see a lot less of that because of the kidding system. So that that one's reduced. So what I'm hoping for, Mark, is that everybody out there buys this new Shingo book, Kaizen and the Art of Creative Thinking, Mm -hmm. and they get together in study groups, 
and they asked people to learn from the great Dr. Shingo once again. Mm -hmm. And study groups are so powerful. I mean, I can read a book and forget everything that I read, but if I sit in a study group and we talk about it and then I get a chance to apply it, then I remember everything that's there. And books are so, if you use it this way, books are the least expensive Mm -hmm. way of educating people in your company, the least expensive way. Yeah, I, I I love study groups because it helps take, you know, what what might seem like theory in in the book or, or somebody else's examples, and and it, it's a great way of translating that into action and discussion around. Okay, so how does that apply to us? You know, if we're reading about Toyota, that's great, but you know, we're a different type of business. You know, what do we learn from that? Yes. So once again, I thank you very much, Mark, for the opportunity to talk with you. Well, thank you for taking time out of uh, your schedule to, to share, you know, a you know, preview of these new books. And, and I think I'll speak for a lot of uh, podcast listeners that, you know, we're looking forward to seeing the book and, uh, you know, we'll post a review and um, links on the blog website for, you know, how people can go. Uh, oh, thank go you, Mark. That. And I'll send you, send you a copy right away. Thanks an awful lot, Mark. Appreciate it. Okay. We'll talk to you again soon, I hope. Thanks for listening. This has been the Lean Blog Podcast. For lean news and commentary updated daily, visit www.leanblog.org. If you have any questions or comments about this podcast, email mark at leanpodcast at gmail.com.